It seems to be a truism of executive life. No matter how early you get up in the morning, there still is never enough time. A.J. Fife is a typical modern executive. He's the vice president and general manager of Wabasso Limited, a North American textile firm with annual grosses of 35 to 40 million dollars. Here's your mail, Mr. Fife. Okay, thank you. Can you take a couple of short memos? Yes. First one's to Peter Moffat in Memphis. Tell him I'll be there on the 5th and 6th of November to arrange hotel accommodation and to set the annual meeting. Like executives all over the world, his time is devoted to a wide range of managerial activities. Administration, production, marketing, finance. All the ingredients that must mix to make a successful company. Still, the executive's role can be boiled down to one essential responsibility. Keep things moving at a profit. The effective business manager meets this responsibility by careful planning, by meticulous attention to detail. But of course, even the best executives can't think of everything. No matter how sound the planning, how wise and far-seeing the decisions, how careful the attention to detail, there are always things that can upset the equations. The unknown, the X factor. It might be a natural disaster, or a faulty decision by a subordinate, or an unexpected management battle that leads to crisis. The superior executive learns early in the game that an important part of his job is to plan against contingencies, to contend with the unknown, to reduce the X factors. Why? That's what this film is all about. On March 20th, 1973, the annual report for 1972 was approved by the board of directors and sent to the printer. H. Roy Crabtree, chairman of the board and president, 1972 was the year in which Wabasso Limited had some problems. However, by the end of the year, we felt that we had these solved. And with a high demand for our products, and particularly with new machinery coming into production during 1973, we were really looking forward to 1973. Of course, this was before the 21st of March. On March 21st, Wabasso collided head-on with an X-Factor. On that day, because of the new construction at Wabasso's plant at Three Rivers, Quebec, it was necessary to shut a sprinkler control valve. This operation, in turn, shut down part of the sprinkler system. Some four hours later, disaster struck. Ghislaine Touton returned from lunch at about 12.20 and set about readying the burners on his machine for the afternoon's work. His co-worker, Louis Pathier, checked behind the machine to see if everything was in order, and then moved around in front to open the door. Flames jumped out at him. Instantly, he grabbed a fire extinguisher and yelled for help. Another co-worker, Rosaire Charlebois, came over to help. He, too, grabbed an extinguisher, but by then it was too late. Ghislaine Touton now saw that the fire was already in the main duct and catching the ceiling. He yelled for everyone to run for their lives. Fernand Blaise was on duty at the main gate. He saw flames on the roof of the finishing plant. When he called to find out what was going on, he was told that the fire was out of control. He immediately called the Three Rivers Fire Department. On the 21st of March, I was having my lunch at my place when uh, I got a phone call from the station telling me that there was a fire at the Wabasso Cotton. So I jumped in my car and uh, started to the Wabasso Cotton. On my way, I told myself it's just going to be some kind of a practice because I knew they, they had uh, sprinklers in the plan. But the minute I arrived at the Wabasso Cotton, I found out when I went into the plant that the sprinklers were out of service. So I called for a general alarm due to the fact that this fire was quite a, quite a fire, a big, big one. And I thought we, we are going to have trouble with that. Our firemen 
who were 104 in number, they worked all through the night until the next day on the four-story building at the center of the plant. It was the worst fire that I've ever seen in my life. Oh, when we were about 10 to 15 miles out of Three Rivers, we could see the glow at that point. I knew this was a real dandy. It became evident uh, that we couldn't do anything about it. I mean, it was burning itself out at this point, and it was just a question of time. Major priority was to get rolling again. At 11.40 a.m. on March 22nd, almost 24 hours later, the last fire truck left the site. The central portion, about one-third of the Three Rivers plant, had been destroyed. Terrible as it was, it was only the beginning of Wabasso's nightmare. The first problem we faced was to get the mill back in operation. We had about a thousand people out of work, wondering whether they had, it, had their jobs or not. We had to restore the power to the mill and also the fire protection before we could start. These decisions seemed large at the time, but looking back on it, they're, they're, they're kind of small uh, today, considering some of the other problems that we've had to, had to face since, such as cleaning up the debris from the fire, making plans to restart the, uh, uh, rebuild the buildings. Uh, all of these things uh, have taken up a tremendous amount of time. You think that because you have insurance, you're well covered against any eventuality, but the, having the insurance is only a uh, means of getting some money. <laughs> really, the, the problems of reconstruction fall on, on all the people involved. The fire took away about 50% of our operation. The week following that disaster, we had to put in all temporary services in order to get back into production as soon as possible. Since then, all kinds of problems unfamiliar to a mill manager have come up. Construction, layout of new plant, uh, delivery of material, ordering the uh, machinery, and also the demolition problem. It's a major undertaking to demolish building of this size and protect anything that can be reusable. Another problem which will be facing us once we get everything going will be the problems of running in the machines, making sure that everything is balanced and that the production can come back to the level that was the day of March 20, 20th. Wabasso well, Limited employs over 3,000 employees. In Trois-Rivières area, we are the largest employer with some 1,400 employees. The fire resulted in about one-third of that number being laid off indefinitely. Most of the occupations affected were skilled jobs, while some were highly specialized. We had just completed and put in operation our denim section after considerable training of our employees and the fire just wiped it out. The equipment which will be bought to replace the burned equipment will be different and necessarily will require breaking time and retraining of our employees to use it properly. The fire certainly wrecked my operation. We've had to look for places to finish our goods, and this processing has cost the company thousands of dollars. Our machines are idle. Our new machine costing half a million dollars that came into operation December is stopped. We have already lost good personnel, and before startup, we're liable to lose more. Much time has been spent purchasing new equipment and layouts. It's been a mess. The uh, first thing that we had to do, of course, was to find a place where we could set up a uh, sewing operation like the one we have around here now. We had no time to train employees. We had lost employees and we had to replace them. We did not have a proper setup to test new machines. We had to buy the best, the best possible in the quickest time or shortest period possible to get things well lined up to start new production. We lost four and a half million dollars 
in inventory, raw material, goods in process, and finished goods. Immediately, we were hit with a monetary problem, a tight money situation. And we've had serious difficulties in the financial department in the form of large drains upon our cash resources to refinance inventories and the rebuilding program which is going on. We were having many uh, processes uh, done outside, some of them in the United States. It has come at a time when we are in a bad bargaining position due to high interest rates and our suppliers being in short supply. We weren't able to sell that much in finished goods, so we were having one little monetary crisis after another. The fire was a severe blow to our 1973 marketing plans. We had several large orders on our books which had to be canceled. We had major programs with, organ with stores such as this that also had to be withdrawn. We at one time enjoyed a spacing equivalent to two sides of a display such as this. We have now, we are now down to one only. We've also had severe problems with our sales force that worked for many, many years to build up our position in the market. This is lost. It will take several years to regain. Our advertising program in the future will certainly have to be increased in its expenditure so that this position that we formerly enjoyed can be regained. The after effects of March 21st continue to hang heavy over Wabasa. The entire structure of the company has been severely affected. I'd like to confine our talk for the minutes to where we are falling behind on what programs we've already instituted, and secondly, anything new that's come up. Wabasa's executives think it may be anywhere from one to five years before the scar has completely healed and the company is back to where it was before the fire. Question of this production to where we're going to be in the first quarter of next year. We know what our target is. Comedics, the people we hired to advise us on the pollution aspect of this, uh, say that they do not have enough information at the present. And it's going to be one hell of a situation getting back into that cotton market. And all because of a series of X factors. Ordinarily, the sprinkler control valve would be open. But this time, because of the new construction, the valve was shut. Ordinarily, workers would spot a machine fire instantly and go after it with fire extinguishers. But the workmen at the machine where the fire actually started were at lunch. Ordinarily, the automatic sprinkler system would arrest a machine fire. But the sprinkler system was inactive because the sprinkler control valve was shut. A unique set of factors? Not at all. In routine fire protection inspections, in factories and plants all over North America last year, over 1,600 sprinkler control valves were found shut. 1,600 time bombs ticking away like the one that crippled Wabasso. Well, as you might imagine, this disaster struck at the largest unit of our company, and our guesstimate at this time is the loss will exceed about $15 million. Since that time, our key people have spent an untold amount of time planning for provisional production, that is to keep ourselves in business in a limited way, and planning new uh, production and new plants to replace that which was destroyed. Now, as we've only a limited number of people of the caliber that can deal with this, we've had to employ a lot of consultants. We've also run into problems that we never thought we would contend with at this time. For instance, the pollution situation. Our building permits were held up until we could provide the regulatory people with satisfactory uh, answers as to how we're going to treat pollution. If we didn't have the fire, we wouldn't have to cross that barrier at this stage. The time schedule we have to uh, rebuild this plant is roughly one year. Normally it would take up to two years in the planning stage before you ever started construction. We have had to go ahead and, and uh, plan this uh, complete new building, uh, new machinery layouts and all within a matter of months. We've had absolute cooperation from the insurance people. 
both in terms of advice and all their actions have been within the spirit of the insurance. Furthermore, they've been more than willing to make progress payments. We've received all the assistance and help that we have wanted from the insurance people. None of us in our wildest dreams would have thought that a loss of this nature could occur. I don't know when we'll get out from under, but I think a year from now we'll still bear the effects of this fire, particularly in getting back our market share. Hopefully, we will be operating before the 21st of March 1974, but how long it will take to train and retrain personnel, and how long it will take us to operate efficiently is a question that I don't think can be answered at this time. A unique opportunity has allowed us to bring this story to a conclusion. As indicated in the program you have just seen, Wabasso, though critically wounded, was able to rebuild despite the difficulties normally associated with such a process. And they were able to get back into the textile production business. However, the events of 1973, in combination with changing economic times, ultimately took a toll on this organization. It was sold, and today, Wabasso exists only as a brand name. The site where Wabasso's Three Rivers plant was situated is quite different. A large portion of what was once Three Rivers' largest employer is now a small shopping plaza. The loss of a major employer has had an impact beyond the lives of those directly connected with the company. It's had impact upon the community and its people. Roger Tremblay, Three Rivers. Okay, I remember when, uh, when it occurs back in 1973, okay, I was uh, 17 years old and I remember that uh, I was there to see the mill burn. You know, Three Rivers is a city of uh, big mills, but uh, we can't for that forget uh, Web Asso Mill, which was at that time the bigger employer of, of uh, the city. And uh, when it closed, certainly the, there were many people unemployed. On the economy of uh, Three Rivers, uh, this was a big uh, minus. Gaston Grenier, Three Rivers. In, in 1973, I was for a company Wabasso in Three Rivers, Quebec, as a steam plant superintendent. Over a thousand people was working at the plant there, you know, and uh, closing that uh, mail, you know, uh, some of the people could get a job in Magog or Sherbrooke or uh, in other cities. Uh, but it's very hard for the people, you know, when they live uh, for 25 years in the same place and move uh, with their children. It's make a stress. And uh, many people are still stressing of that. And uh, I saw this man, uh, when they closed the door, crying. And uh, it, it's too late, the train is gone. Uh, what is important, actually, in the mill where I work, which is the only big mill of the city where I work. If something like that would occur, I don't know if uh, it will not be uh, maybe the end of the city. I think that the impact, uh, you will feel it 5, 10, and 15 years later. On yourself, the, uh, the employees, on your children, on your family, on everybody, on all the community. The fact that the site now contains a smaller employer simply amplifies the impact of the story. An entire community is affected to some degree, and the change from a prospering industrial firm is a message not to be overlooked. X factors do happen, but planning, preparing, and asking what could happen here and what could be done to avoid it. 
These remain the key steps to preventing or minimizing the impact of loss.